Hi everyone, my name is Victor Ogundele and I welcome you to one of my content. Uh, today we want to discuss something we call trade receivables in financial modeling. And uh, this is to let you also understand that see, financial modeling is beyond just putting figures in Excel and you think that's where it's end. But financial modeling is practical or uh, we use it for so many, many things. Now, one of the uses is using your model to get something we call a short-term loan and in getting short-term loan one important thing we consider uh, that we usually consider the most is your working capital because it's a short-term loan that you need to uh, meet up short-term financial obligation and as such as a modeler you must always understand different things that must be factored and incorporated into your uh, model so let's 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 have it a walkthrough of it. I'll start with the model set style guide so that uh, this is always good whenever you are building your model. It makes it easier easy for anyone to pick up the model and be able to update and also navigate through and also make them to understand what has been done in the uh, model. Um, so any cell being formatted, just know that basically the yeah, added value you can change, you can update it. Then this other one is uh, function. Uh, we have a put one or, or two functions or formula we can use uh, that and which means you might not want to tamper with it unless you understand the, how the formula work then the model currency is currently in error and it is in a million the timing we're starting with model start timing so this is flexible you can change that month in a period so it's just monthly then month in a calendar year is 12 months so if you take a look at this you can see uh, January I think how many months do we have so we have 60 more years so which means this is over five years now I know most times it can be difficult trying to build out a, a monthly networking capital but as I said in real life especially when you are building operational kind of model definitely you need to be able to build out your working capital month on month so to this content is focused on trade receivables now days in a period so we'll take a look at the days we have in each of the months right over the 60 month forecast now um, we as i said we are focusing on trade receivable so which means we just have our revenue being ad coded so maybe you want to if you want to incorporate this into your own model definitely all you just need to do is by the time you've calculated or computed your revenue you can just link them directly here now uh, this has also factored in the reality of how business work uh, I think maybe some of my other videos I'm going to uh, release a content on how you project revenue and also be at least 80 to 90 percent uh, accurate in real uh, business case right especially for a typical mature businesses revenue does not grow on a straight line method yes revenue can grow but it does not grow on a straight line uh, method like that so there's always a seasonality also depends on the industry that your business kind of operates right so which means most time it can be like a zigzag of a thing and that's the same thing you can see in this revenue so month one month two month, so month one month two increase month three decrease month four increase significantly so if i if i just if i light the old thing and i put that in let me put that in a straight chart so i put that in a straight chart you kind of see uh, what this kind of give us and in reality this is more like how business kind of operates in reality so as a modeler you must be able to also consider that in your model beauty so i would we will cover that in the next uh, contents okay so here we have our receivable days so just using this for only receivable days you can also use the same approach for your payable days and other networking capital line item so the receivable days is assuming this will be over 20 this on average okay and now there's always a uh, need for us to always factor in adjustments for seasonality okay uh, at least based on my knowledge uh, for example let's take like a manufacturing firm maybe uh, beverages in December what usually happen is because they have a target or let's say towards the end of the year of the business they have a target to be able to sell up to this so what you know, you know what the marketing you need to usually do is that they kind of create a discount and they call their distributor they, they ask them to just take the goods 
okay against uh the next year or maybe because it's the first period they tend to give them more and tell them that you know what yes we understand this 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 so we're going to give you more uh, receivable deals so which means if you are give if you are giving the goods to you now we are saying okay you know what to take you okay pay us in the next 30 days we know that this is festive period so you do different kind of thing you know so you kind of factor in those kind of typical business reality uh, into it and things that can affect you being able to collect your cash quickly as soon as possible from your from your uh, could be your distributor could be your customer okay so now this is considering okay maybe uh, um, in April the business they feel like right so if the business has historical financial it's kind of easy for us to use the trend of the historical but if it's just the business no historical and the whole thing you can also use the typical uh, business uh, understanding right so i think april there's always this festive period then maybe the company would decide that you know what we're going to just some of our goods we give it out uh, we also give them more time to be able to sell it uh, right and before we get back our money so which we definitely increase our receivable this so it could either be it could either be positive it could either be negative so you are, you are free to do that as i said it's also in in future so which means in that part in that current month right what happened is revenue definitely increased right and so the receivable also increased so which means we are considering fact seasonality some other factors that can drive delay uh, in your receivables okay uh, because this is also what the lender want to see they want to be able to see with this particular period <laughs> are you sure you'll be able to meet up this uh, in typical project final they will tell you uh, we, we kind of call it debt sculpting so where you sculpt uh, your repayment based on the period that you know you have more cash right you can use it to pay that. and then period you know that you'll be short of cash you then try to negotiate to pay a lower uh, repayment kind of thing so the same thing also uh, apply in <laughs> here okay so now here we have a receivable account so we have a beginning account then the revenue recognized which is coming from the revenue that we computed so which we are building your model definitely you link that now for the ending balance and always remember uh, receivable is a balance sheet line item and all the line item in a balance sheet represents ending balance okay so which means any computation you do you get the ending balance and you can do more like a work back now we have like two or three methods that you can use but somehow somehow kind of prefer this so based on our typical uh, knowledge right and uh, our general formula they will tell us that your receivable days right divided by days in the period so which means the days in that period in the particular month considering this is monthly base then multiply by what uh, sorry your receivable days right uh, divided by your days in the period then multiply by your revenue i'm correct <laughs> the mind me right so your receivable days divided by days in that particular period then multiply by your revenue so which means that formula is actually giving us the ending value because the balance sheet line item right as such we can plug that into getting our actual cash that's been that's been received in that particular period and to do that that will just give us our beginning balance plus our what plus our revenue minus the what the calculated ending receivable days so as i said we have two or three different methods that you can use okay i think i've done i did one con uh, one content and i used the other the method but what this will do is we give us the cash the actual cash that was being received okay and by the time you do the add your so i'm using a positive approach okay so everything in the model represents positive value so beginning balance plus your revenue then you deduct your cash received from it then you have your ending balance so if you take a look at this it will also be the same thing with the ending balance that you've calculated right so, so this just kind of give you uh, the picture as to how much you uh, the revenue you make and how much you are collecting so it definitely become a split over a period so which means to get a particular period for example in month so if you take a look at month four right we had this each outstanding of 146 million then the 463 sales again right so because of the increase in the receivable days we collected less we received less but in the following month you can see that we have significant cash being received 
so this is more like the typical way the business kind of operates all right and it's easy for them to be able to plan uh, based based on that and we take a look at the cash received to revenue and it kind of give us the what the percent uh, look like uh, right and i think most times it's always good to even use the cash received not to the current revenue but to do the revenue plus the outstanding receivable so that we kind of know what that kind of look like and and, and the real sense if, if you decide how to put this uh, as annual output it then kind of makes sense uh, because you now see the consistency i know most people struggle with uh, building out networking capital on monthly uh, basis right so by the time you do that you just think i just use my sum if and this will be picking the end of the period of course you remember balance sheet is a snapshot at the particular period right so we're saying hey we are doing our balance sheet position at the end of this period i kind of see how that kind of moves so which means different things can happen within the month right and for short term for borrowing they want to see that movement right and this that's one of the reason you definitely uh, need to build out your receivables month on month and if you plug that into a chart uh, which kind of make more sense and it's easy to, to 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 understand if you check this other side this is the revenue you kind of see the movement in revenue which the cash received to revenue just in form of percent the trade receivables ending balance you can see the kind of movement right and uh, i can tell you if you take any business that has been in operation and you plug out their, their receivables right i'm sure definitely you can you will not see a straight line thing so just moving from point one straight to point uh, 100 so you always see this zigzag of a thing and by the time they plug this into the map into a chart which makes it easier to to read right so for the line chart you can see this is the revenue right so the cash receive is in the red dotted line and it's easy for you to see that hey this particular month we are receiving much right maybe due to uh, the fall in our receivables in previous months so, uh, i have to do the the timing on quarterly basis so that's kind of easy to to read and you kind of see the movement right period you expect to have high revenue then you're going to have a low cash inflow then you get to plan yourself that hey during the cash i'm going to have much cash maybe i'll need to be able to reserve enough cash to be able to cover up my business operation uh, during this period if not the business shortfall of cash and definitely we need to try and get a short-term funding and if you look at it in uh the, the the other graph right you kind of see what this is my revenue and you see this this picture so as a modeler you must be able to build that and mirror the reality of the business in your model build the said financial modeling is not just uh, artistic thing is a mechanical thing is based on is is being built to drive decision making right to save companies from some business risk so as such as a model it's also our responsibility to sh make sure that we are able to build this out properly right as I said in a typical operational kind of model uh, you, you always incorporate your actual then from your actual you build your forecast if there are changes in plan and strategy of the business uh, business need to do one or two things it's easy to, for them to make that decision and also see the financial impact uh, on the on the business so uh, once again uh, let me let me keep it short here so what i'll do is i'll drop the link to this uh, excel file so you can uh, download it and also uh, use it for your own uh, personal uh, learning please note that i can be wrong i can be right right but because it is finance it definitely can have a different perspective different from what i have but the whole thing is as long as it's it makes sense right uh, we keep learning from from each other and make sure we drive this modeling into where we are able to build out a, a typical reality of a, of a business so once again uh, my name is victor and thank you for watching